um, the next person is Shalom Black, who is amazing. She is, yes. she is an incredible beauty guru who has a huge following on YouTube, and she is also a burn survivor. And she shares her story so openly and so beautifully. Um, the next panelist is Nadine Corey of Sunday Morning View. Um, and Sunday Morning View is a social platform celebrating real women and in their full glory and their full beauty. Um, and then finally, Dana Brown, who's the global brand manager of Venus. Um, and as you know, Venus is doing some incredible work that I want to ask you more about and probe you in a way that we make other brands sweat. So um, here we go. Okay. <laughs> so I wanted to start this conversation with Jazz, with somebody who has lived her entire life almost in the public eye and radically transformed physically in the public eye. What can you share that you have been most self-conscious about? And how did you, if you have, or partly, get over that bridge? Um, well, obviously, having gender dysphoria, a lot of my anxiety and insecurity about my physical body has stemmed from me feeling like I don't present as a woman. And, you know, I've been grateful that I was able to transition at a young age thanks to the love and support of my family. And I started hormone blockers at age 11, which prevented me from going through middle puberty. But even then, I still have those insecurities. When I look in the mirror, sometimes I feel uncomfortable. I look at my mustache, I'm like, mustache right now, I look at my nose, I'm like, is it too masculine? And, you know, I would say that since I had the bottom surgery, I've really kind of stepped into my confidence and I've overcome pretty much all of my physical insecurities. And I can look at myself in the mirror and say, I am beautiful, I am me. Um, but now I have to tackle all the emotional insecurities, which yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the deeper stuff. How but, do you do that? Uh, I'm working on it step by step, you know. I'm, learning to love myself. I do preach a lot about self-love, yeah. um, but I'm the one who needs to practice what I preach at times. And you know, it's hard. I try to be my best self, um, but there's still a lot of anxiety. When you look deep within yourself, you know, there's a lot of things that make you feel uncomfortable about being you, because we all have our flaws. But I learned that focusing on the good things rather than the inadequacies has really helped me step into my power and realize that I am beautiful, that I am amazing, even though I do have those imperfections. I love that. It's so interesting because one of the microsoft that we talk about is focusing on something that you've overcome in your past mm -hmm. and thinking back to it and thinking, you can slay bigger dragons than this one. You've done, or you've, you've slayed bigger dragons than this before. Mm -hmm. Has that ever come up to you? Like, do you that kind of trick and think of like, oh my god, look at everything I have overcome with everyone watching. And does that help you through your journey? It totally helps me. I mean, I look back at the times that I've been able to speak in front of audiences of thousands of people, yeah. and I'm like, wow, I was able to do that. I could do anything. And that's really helped me just recognize my strength and realize that I'm unstoppable if I just allow yeah. myself to be. We all are. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Shalom, I wanted to ask you. Okay. You have suffered from severe burns when you were nine, um, but you've thankfully healed physically. But emotionally, can you tell us a little bit about how you were able to overcome that intense journey? Uh, it was a roller coaster. Is that Michael? Is it There you go. It was a roller coaster growing up in Nigeria, and after you know, getting out of the hospital after four months. Um, I'm like excited, I'm finally going home. But then as soon as I got home, my neighbors that I used to play with, you know, uh, they got scared of me and kids. And one of my neighbors came in the house one day and I remember him running out crying. Oh my gosh, he looks like a monster to his mom. And that just like, from that moment, I was just drained. I was just like, oh my God, I'm never the same and I'll never be the same. Um, I remember honestly just thinking, I don't want to ever go to school, and I didn't think my parents were actually going to push me to go to school. I thought my life is basically done, and I would just be in um, in the house all the time. But you know, eventually, my parents were very helpful. They would be to push me. Um, of course, I had to go to school. Yeah. African parents. Um, so 
I started going to school, things were still hard, but you have those people that, you know, would stand by you and support you. And then I, we decided to move to America for surgical purposes and a whole ball of getting bullied. Just, it's different from back home, you know, kids were very in your face and just mean and you have social media. Um, but I think one of the steps for me was realizing that um, I have a purpose. This is what my mom used to always tell me, you have a purpose. And I didn't really know what that purpose was, you know, because I'm like, I'm, my life has completely changed. But one day just posting on social media without my wig or my makeup, which was something that was so hard for me to ever do. And the was gone. Mind you, I didn't have a lot of followers. I probably had like 2,000. And just the response from just random people telling me, wow, this is so inspirational. And one, I remember one young girl just messaged me. and was just like, you are the reason why I decided to put the skirt on today. Because I, I have a scar on my leg and I never wanted people to see that. And so from there, I just really start, I started understanding like, okay, so this is what my mom was saying. You have a purpose. You have something that has happened to you, but you can always change that to good mm -hmm. and positive. You know, it might not necessarily be for you, but just seeing other people living their life because I was willing and open to share my own struggles really made me feel good about myself. Mm -hmm. And I think that has helped me just come out of my shell. That's beautiful. Yeah, I love that. You're able to impact so much change in people's lives. Yes. Um, so talking about the media and how we portray women, how we portray what we call beauty or perfection, Nadine, um, I wanted to talk to you. So you um, helped found Sunday Morning View, and it was created out of, and I thought this is really interesting, out of a fashion photographer's quest to stop feeding into the cycle of perfect women. Like yeah. you're shooting models all day, but then even they weren't good enough, so he would go home and alter their images and yeah. what was the aha moment before that? There are two kind of parts of the aha moment. My aha moment and then Carlo's aha moment who's standing over here. Hi Carlo. <laughs> um, Carlo, he founded SMB, Sunday Morning View, um, which is an online magazine devoted to making women feel like art, just the way they are in their natural states. Um, and that story really comes from Carlo, my best way to summarize it is just that he was able to photograph women of all kinds of all kinds of women from all over the world, and because of that, he realized how exhausting it is to have to modify them and create an alternate reality after that, the Photoshop. And that's how Sunday Morning was created, kind of the illusion or the idea that you spend your Sundays, your sports bra, and your shorts, and the ladies we all do it, no makeup with a cup of coffee, and you, there's no way you're getting out of bed past noon. Um, and that's kind of how the name was created. And so. I think for Carlo, his aha moment was that there's something here, something real, something raw outside of the editorial magazines and the Photoshop that goes on with all photos that are taken. For me, my aha moment comes from, you know, my own experiences and my own struggles of body image and being a curvier woman. There's you know, you grew up with that constantly, getting scrutinized for it. So when I was introduced to Sunday Morning View, it was my opportunity, like you mentioned, the purpose to inspire other women, to teach them about the mindset that you could have about your life, and how you could take big pictures, and how you could feel beautiful without the illusion that me, the media has kind of given us. So that's kind of where the aha moment comes in for both of us. That's beautiful. I love that. Like, I feel like everyone has their own aha moment when they realize this image that we've been fed and these images like sometimes aren't what we actually even think is beautiful yeah. or what should be presented as absolutely beautiful. i think we all get caught up in it especially yeah. growing up in the social media era the digital era mm -hmm. um we are convinced that this is our reality but it's really not we're all beautiful every single one of you are and so it's more to just embrace that without the makeup without the photoshop without the face tunes and just embrace who you are as, as you so cliche as it is, no one really thinks about it like that. So you mentioned face tunes. Yeah. I want to ask you some more about that. So I think most women know that a lot of the images that they see in the media are retouched. Oh, yeah. um, they're photoshopped. And then even on social media, this when we scroll through, we like to say other people's highlight reels, it's like mm -hmm. kind of not real life. And you know that 
um, even they might have used Facetune or retouched their images. I was just talking to a teenage girl today who was saying, um, I know that everyone, before they post, Facetunes it, but it doesn't make me feel less bad. No. So what do you think about that? Like, even though we know it, oh. what are your steps to feeling less bad? Well, I mean, for one, I'm guilty of it. I've used it on countless times. And you know, I think it came, it got to a point, I think, when I was introduced to Facetune that, or fo just Photoshop in general, or even Snapchat filters, that I couldn't take a photo and post it without yeah. Facetuning it or having a filter on Snapchat. And that, like, when I finally got that kind of like a light bulb moment, I was like, oh my goodness, this is, this is a problem. And it's not just me, it's many people who are like, oh, I prefer my pictures with filter where I gotta I can just tweak it up just a little bit, cinch it from the waist, you know, kind of make me present myself a little smaller in the photo, then I can post it. Yeah. Then it's acceptable and then all of a sudden that becomes your reality. And it, it took realization of that is not your reality. That is not who you are. And you don't need to constantly conform to that. So I had to delete it. <laughs> delete it. <laughs> delete it at all. You know? Yeah. yeah. That. And so that's what I did. And um, it's about making a choice. Does. It's about understanding who you are as a person, understanding where you're, where, understanding that you have flaws like yeah. every other person can and does, and just loving yourself for that. So, uh, so Jazz, we're here with Venus. We're talking about Venus. As Nan said, it's a brand about razors and it's a brand about shaving. And you've been on both sides, sort of, of the fence when it comes to shaving. And you've had times when you sort of flaunted that you're not and made that choice. So I wanted to ask you, you know, your reasoning behind both of those jazz. Yeah, well, my uh -huh. legs are hair right now. I haven't shaved in a few months, and, you know, that's my decision. Like, when I shave, I do it because I want to, and when I don't shave, it's because I don't feel like shaving. And, you know, on both ends, the reason why I do shave at times is because we all know how good it feels, like, when we do remove the hair and then your legs are so smooth, it's like, oh. Yeah. Best feeling ever. <laughs> um, but the reason why I don't shave is because it's also empowering to grow up my hair in a world where women are sometimes expected to shave their legs and to be able to not do that and just not care. It really helps me overcome my anxiety and insecurities and just embrace what's natural. Yeah, let yourself be mm -hmm. however you feel like. like I love that. Um, and Shalom, I want to talk to you, and Jazz, you can answer this too, but. Both of you have been in the public eye and made a choice to be in the public eye. And Shalom, you know, you're an accomplished beauty guru on YouTube. Um, what was the main driver after this very emotional time that you experienced that you told us about, where you got, you know, mocked and made fun of and you didn't think your life would ever be the same? What was your driver to go public and start a YouTube channel and talk to everyone in the world? I think for me is, uh freedom. And I know that's weird to say, but I wanted to feel that because I didn't feel free in my body. I didn't um, feel like I was living my life the way that I should be because I'm constantly worried about this. So to empower myself, I decided, well, let me challenge myself and put myself on social media. I was so scared. My first YouTube video, literally so scared out of my mind. I remember when I started my YouTube before I would get on camera, I was, I was using a laptop, shitty quality, but um, I would put one layer of foundation on before I come on because I was so scared like what people would think, even though I'm still, I'm trying to put myself out there and free myself. Um, and I would come on camera with one layer of foundation and I feel like I don't have anything on, but I think I got to the part where I'm like, okay, well, you're not gaining this confidence, you're not feeling good about yourself because you're constantly still hiding. Even though, you know, people can see the scars, you know, people started asking questions like, what happened to you, what happened to you? And I was just like, you know what, let me just go ahead and do this video. I did a video called um, Power of Makeup, which Nikkei Tutorial started, um, where you have one face of your face made up with makeup and the other one not. And honestly, just to respond from that video, like I said, other people being inspired by my story and coming out of their show, is a reason why I also came out of my show, but I honestly started my social media, my YouTube channel to help myself come out of my show, and this is something that I'm constantly doing, like it's a process. So I've been actually doing a serial on my channel called Facing My Fear, 
So I take one fear that I have and I try to conquer that. And that way I can literally just go out and do anything. Um, couldn't come out the house without makeup. I lived where 7-Eleven is literally across the street from my house and I would not step out of the house without a drop of makeup. And so being able to have that power now and be like, that's it, I'm out here. Don't make up. Mm -hmm. Go downtown LA. You know, it's so free. It's so free. Like I love doing makeup. It's one of my passions, but it's also empowering to have that part to just say, I don't want to have makeup on today. Just like you said, you know, I don't feel like shaving my leg today. You know, so I don't know. That that has been my my drive for my yeah. And Jazz too, like I would love to hear you speak about power and the impact on yourself too of sharing this message that's sometimes controversial of like living the way you are on such a public stage. Yeah. How's that affected you? It's kind of interesting. It's kind of interesting because I feel like the whole this whole life kind of chose me in a way because I was so young the first time I did share my story. I was only six years old when I appeared on 2020 2020 with Barbara Walters for the first time, you know, speaking about being a transgender child. And since then, I've been in the public eye, and that's just kind of been my life. So I don't, I don't know. I, I do feel very empowered sharing my story and helping other people, but I don't know what the future entails, if I'm going to continue doing it or not, because I've really never been the one to decide my own destiny. And sorry, I'm getting emotional for some reason, but it just it is something deep for me. Yeah. Um, so heading into this next chapter of my life, you know, I'm going to college and I'm gonna be able to chart out my own path for the first time and I'm excited for that. And of course, I'm very grateful to be able to share my story and help people in the way that I do, but I'm also excited to be able to continue doing that in my own unique way in the future. I think that is an amazing point that women should not be obligated to share mm -hmm. anything, you know, about their stories that they don't feel comfortable sharing. Yeah. And at the same time, it does empower women so much when they see people who have had struggles that look like them or beyond anything they could ever imagine. Or just normalizing a wide rainbow and array of how yeah. women look in the media, which is what you're doing, Katie. Yeah. I think there's no one right way to be. No. Um, and Jazz, we're so excited to see. Or not. I'm excited to see. You know, <laughs> you're not seeing um, Hopefully you see something. Um, I wanted to talk to all of you guys. I think personal stories are so impactful and stories of um, connection and of making an impact on other people's lives are so impactful. And um, Shalom, you mentioned a woman, a girl who reached out to you and said that you had changed her life. I'd love to hear you know, some other stories of connection that you guys have been able to make with people who um, who really felt moved by you sharing your stories. Yeah, there was um, there was one time we were at just an outdoor market and this woman came up to me and my mom in tears crying and she said, you saved my son's life. She said that he was contemplating suicide but that the show helped him and her be able to understand his identity help him step into his true authentic self and to be able to affect people on that level it's just it's the craziest range of emotions that you feel but it also motivates you to continue sharing your story and continue helping other people um so talking about that before i do want to continue helping other people by sharing my story in the future um but i don't know well, it's up to you now up to me now yeah yeah you know i think another story it has nothing to do Star, but just being able to relate to so many people. Mm -hmm. oh okay, can't hear myself. Um, <laughs> just being able to um, people that don't have any story that has to do with what I've been through, but being able to still connect with those people, it's really inspiring. I met a lady downtown in LA, um, and she told me she was going through a divorce, and my video helped her. And I was just like, I was so surprised. And I'm like, I wouldn't think you know, that my content would um, inspire somebody that's going through such thing, because I've never experienced that. Um, and basically what she told me, the fact that she was still living and still doing what 
what you're doing. You inspired me and made me realize that, okay, yes, it's the divorce, but it's not the end of the world. And that was just like, whoa, to me, you know? So I'm just so glad and so blessed that what I'm doing can inspire millions of people that don't necessarily share similar, you know, struggles as me, but we all go through struggles, you know, so. The power of that. stories is right. incredible. You tell stories through what you do. Yeah. For me, it's a little bit more of a personal note for what fuels me and, and what I do at Sunday morning. Um, I come from a very conservative cultural background. Um, being Middle Eastern and, and having a multitude of female cousins and family members, I can't tell you how many younger girls, even just my own little cousins, who told me at the age of nine, I'm going on a diet. You know, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. I want to look like you. I want to look like this person. And it it breaks my heart because I was the same way. <laughs> and I think it's, we're a product of our environment. We're a product of the people that we associate ourselves with, even from a younger age, if you know and you don't know. And at a young age, you really don't. And so what fuels me to keep continuing what I'm doing is being able to talk to women just like all of you and inspire the people that are closest to me that it's a choice. You don't have to think this way about yourself. And if I can teach one person that, then I know I've done my job successfully. changes and so we um, all of us we now choose how to show our skin in a different way and collectively we're looking to really hold up what beauty means in a different way and I think that's really exciting and so in Venus it was like it was just obvious it was time to change we wanted to positively disrupt ourselves as like the guru word to use but we've been doing the same thing for so long we, we actually didn't know what to do like we really didn't um, and then so what we did is just talk to people and we talked to people in the company we talked to people out of the company but I think most importantly which all of you are demonstrating we talked to our friends our sisters our daughters our sons and said like what do you hate about Venus like, as a brand manager like do you hate stuff that I did you're like I've been on the brand What do you not like and like safe zone tell us be honest and people were really amazing about like your products are great don't worry your products are great and we're like okay good but now tell us the bad news and they were like well your advertising doesn't represent me it doesn't include me and as someone who worked on the brand you're like what does that mean that that hurts and you feel humbled and you realize that what they were saying was by showing this one box or this one thing um, that you were saying, I wasn't valid or I wasn't real as a person. And so, I'm so sorry. I mean, this is actually the first time I'm telling anyone about this. I should apologize. So, <laughs> it's okay. And so, you were like, ooh, okay, well. Um, but that was also incredibly empowering because you're like, I know what to do now. I actually know what to do now. And so 
Wait, did you get any resistance? I'm, I know I'm not Ah, resistant. well, I'm definitely getting to that. So Juicy stuff. we just realized what our clear role as a brand was. Because I think what's amazing, you guys are doing things as an individual. You are doing it on a platform. I, I'm just a person that goes to work and works on a really amazing brand. And so we could see ourselves where our brand can have a role to have a voice and give voice to something for change. Um, but it wasn't easy. So, of course, at first, um, to say, was it easy? No, it wasn't easy. It didn't happen overnight, but it was really stories. So all of those people that we talked to, we had all of the stories of what we were talking about. Mm -hmm. So when we would go to do a presentation or try and tell people why we wanted to change, because it's like, why change? It, it, it's working. And that's when you could say, it's one thing to put like bullet points on a page and say, oh, this is what's changed. but what we did instead is just use quotes from all the people that we've collectively talked to to really say like, hey, when we say this, this is actually what we mean from a real person. Um, and we were just lucky enough that people listened to us and they gave us the space to go try. Um, and so we were able to work with our agencies and create some content to then um, go back to the people who had been so honest to us and say, what do you think? And because they'd seen that we trusted them to hear them in the first place. They gave us more feedback, we went back, we kept refining, um, and then we got to where we are, and, and we're still not perfect. Um, and we're actually working to continue to move forward. We have to catch up, but we feel like we know what we need to do, and uh, similar, you were talking about purpose, so um, we felt that we knew then what we wanted to do while staying true to what we do. We help women remove hair if they want to, so um, it was, um, it's definitely a journey that we're still on, and that's why it's amazing to be here and hear your stories because that's really what got it going for us. That's, that's amazing. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> to everyone who is experiencing this perfection anxiety that can really hold us back and that in a lot of different ways and we don't deserve to be held back by something that has been fed to us and that we didn't choose um, and so on that note I wanted to ask all of you guys about your particular um, individual strategies that you use to combat perfection anxiety and I'll share my favorite um, my first step and um, I started at Thrive about a year ago and um, I worked in um, women's media before and you know all of us I think wake up and roll over and look at their phone first thing in the morning and that's just what we do and I did that too and the one micro step that I the first one that I tried when I started at Thrive which is all about micro steps is um, one that says when you wake up first thing in the morning don't look at your phone first thing take just one minute to breathe or or do something else or set an intention for the day um, because what you're doing when you're rolling over and look at your looking at your phone first thing is you're seeing your email you're seeing what your boss wants you to do that day you're seeing what's expected of you you're scrolling through Instagram and social media and following other people's highlight reels and really starting your day on what matters to other people and what they want from you and not on what matters to yourself so I tell myself like I can't look at my phone until I shower on the days that I shower, which is not every day. Yeah. <laughs> um, don't at me. Uh, but, but on those days that I don't, I just like take a breath or like figure out what kind of day I want it to be, and it's really really helped. Um, and then the other quick thing that I love because I'm a minimalist, you can see I'm not wearing any jewelry, um, is that I drop things that I make. I give myself permission to drop things that don't. And that is so freeing. Um, it's, you know, people think they have to do everything and answer every text and answer every email. But if you give yourself permission to drop some things um, and some thoughts, you can set more realistic goals for yourself and you can really 
set yourself up not for failure but for success because you're not expecting yourself to do everything and be everything and live up to every standard. So those are the two that have worked for me that I wanted to hear from you from them. Um, well, the most general advice I have is just to take deep breaths. I know we've all heard that one before, but I do experience a lot of anxiety, not only from perfectionism, but from everything in life. Um, and it's very crippling at times. So being able to just stop for a moment and take a deep breath and be an active observer of my own mind, that really helps me to analyze my thinking and then switch up my thoughts because thoughts you know, they influence your emotions, and your emotions, they influence your reality. You know, we all talk about that, thoughts create reality, whatever, whatever, but it's true, it really does. And by being able to take that deep breath and be present with myself and really get in that feeling of alignment, it just helps me with my anxiety. Um, but I'm still working on it. <laughs> but taking a moment for yourself is such an yes. important thing. Yes. Not so just important. powering through and being like, yeah. it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Yeah. Like, push it away because it'll come back. Um, for me, honestly, it's just exiting social media, um, just because I feel like most of my anxiety just comes from that, and also just uh, following people that I feel like maybe are not impacting my life in a positive way. You know, sometimes you follow people just because they're pretty, you know, or I just like the way that you dress, but if it makes you feel some type of way about yourself every single time you see that person, then it's not worth it, you know, so for me, every time, you know, I kind of go through my timeline, I'm like, Make me feel like shit, even though it's not directly towards me. I'm talking about personally. Um, it's not directly towards me, but that's just how I feel about myself when I look at this person. You know? So I'm like, okay, I don't need to be following this person since I don't feel a good vibe about myself when I see that. Um, and I just take a break from social media. Sometimes I would take like a two day break. You know, I was going through one of my um, emotional breakdown, and at the time I was actually working with Venus, and they saw that he was like, okay, sure, well, if you need to take some time before you make a post for us, that's okay. And I really appreciate that, you know, for a brand to understand that, okay. Sometimes, you know, you can be the strongest person, but you still have the struggles that you go through. And that's why one of my friends always remind me, she said, make sure you always check out, um, check on your strongest friends, you know, because you never know sometimes what you're going through, so. Yeah. That's amazing. I want to yeah. stop on that. Check on your strongest friends. Yeah. That's really beautiful. <laughs> just a quick check-in and a quick text saying I'm thinking of you could do so right. much for somebody who is exactly. struggling in the moment. Sure. Yeah. And just to add to that, we're human. Exactly. And we're not robots. And I think we give ourselves, we're too hard on ourselves for that. I know I am, 100%. Um, but I think one of the things that's best helped me when it comes to perfection anxiety, which is everywhere and constant, um, I have a giant vision board. Mm -hmm. on my wall it's, okay. it's basically a scrapbook but on a wall and um it has everything that it could you could want in a vision board when it comes to quotes words of encouragement um goals of life whether they be monetary or spiritual um and being able to wake up in the morning and look directly at that whether you're thinking about it or subconsciously thinking about it you're planting seeds in your mind um, and it manifests and it changes the whole tone of your day and your week and, and it allows you to think about really what's most important for me is family and my vision for the things that are most important to me and being able to be that role model for the people that I care about the most. So if there's anything I recommend, get a magazine, get some scissors, get a glue stick, cut it up, put it on the wall. It, it really does change change your mindset a little bit, a lot. So Dana, what's your um, for me it's actually a role model. So my mom would never let anyone tell her how to think or what to do. And so any time I just have where I'm feeling it, I have that voice in my head that's like, don't let them tell you that. And, and it sounds cheesy, but I, I literally, literally picture her in my mind. And she was so tough and strong that you just be like, you're right. And then I think someone else said it. Then it's just about, okay, well, what do I actually care about today? I care about my family or I care about what I'm going to do. And um, I, you can just... I think it's about having conversations with yourself. You're, that other part of your mind has a mind of its own. And ever since I was little, I would just would say like, okay, well, 
I guess not this, then I'm gonna do this instead and can talk myself through. And I use that still today, which sounds kind of corny, but it worked back then and it still works for me now. It's totally not corny. There's so much science <laughs> behind reframing and taking yeah. something that you think is a negative or a failure mm -hmm. and finding how that can be a stepping stone to your personal success. There's a ton of science behind that, so you're doing it right. Um, and I just want to issue a challenge to every single person who's here. And I want you to pick one of the steps that was outlined here tonight um, and choose one to do tomorrow when you start to feel that um, skin anxiety or imperfection anxiety. Um, raise your hand if you know the one that you are going to try that resonated with you the most. Yay! Yes. <laughs> I'm excited for everyone. Um, on that note, I want to, like, this was an incredible panel for me. I learned things about each one of you and about things that I want to try in my own life, which doesn't always happen on this panel. Um, but I want to thank all of these incredible women for opening up so beautifully and sharing what they've learned in their lives with us. Thank you. Thank you. to represent and enable in the best ways that we can. So we hope that you at least take some inspiration from the panel today, um, and maybe even join us along this way, whether it's ripping up your skin security by this fabulous photo op over there if you haven't had a chance to do it, or just posting an unfiltered selfie of yourself and using the hashtag so we can all collectively just take a look at a healthy, no pressure social feed. Um, or if there's anything else that you guys want to chat about, the panelists will be here throughout the night. And there's a lot of just really inspiring women in the crowd today, and I hope that we'll end with a lot more meaningful friendships um, by the end of the night. Well, so thank you so much, guys. Woo! We're good. Back to cocktails. <laughs> <laughs>